Hello? Um, I've been having problems with my microphone, so I don't know if it is recording sound and broadcasting sound. So if you're watching, let me know if you can hear me or if uh, you can't, because that would be a shame if I talked a lot and then y'all couldn't hear me. Um, I don't really see anybody tuning in right now. Uh, so I don't know what to do. Um, I'll see. Let me see. Um, I also had to start a separate, um, broadcast. I don't know if you're watching and if you can hear me, let me know. Um, if you can't hear me, let me know and I'll try to restart everything. Um, but I'm having a couple of technical difficulties, um, which is not optimal. Yeah. So hopefully y'all are having a good week so far. Let me know if you're watching and you can hear me uh, because I don't know. I was having problems with my mic and um, my microphone in my phone, which is how I use to record these. So I don't know. Uh, Norma says, I'm here and I can hear. You. Okay, good. All right. If Norma can hear me, then that's, that's, that's what counts. All right. So hopefully you all have been having a good week so far. We've been having a really busy week today, um, or we've been having a busy week today. Well, correct. It's been, it's been a lot. Um, I was fortunate enough to be asked to attend a picnic out at uh, Foggy Blossom Farm uh, as a former artist in residence at Contemporary Craft. They invited me to go out. Um, Dan is also one of their former artists and residents uh, people, and it was good to see where he lives and uh, the willow plants, and that was pretty cool. So I went out there this morning for, oh, it was a while. It started at 10 and we wrapped up around 2 and then went, uh, uh, it was nice. You know, we got to see uh, where he grows the willow and a little bit about how he processes it, but it's not really the time of year to process. So he kind of just kind of talked us through that part. Um, and to see one of his projects that's currently in the works, which was really cool. I always like a good kind of art studio tour. So I did that this morning and then rushed back to do the live. Um, so I was out and about doing that today. Um, if you didn't see last night, last night we debuted two new mixes, the Design Challenge mixes. There's the Garnet and the Lapdorite. Um, and if you go to our website, that's allegorygallery.com, you can see both of those online. And uh, it has all the directions on how to participate. Um, if we do a creative make-along once a month. And um, generally speaking, we try to gear it towards one of those because it's kind of fun to hang out and make stuff using the same stuff. But if you don't uh, get the kit or they sell out before you can grab one, no worries. You can still play along. So definitely keep that in mind and put it on the calendar. It's always fun to work with other folks. Um, and yeah, so also over the weekend, Jen from JNT Creation, she shared another wonderful tutorial in the Allegory Gallery Saturday morning tutorials on YouTube. If you did not get a chance to check it out, please do. It's a really good one. Um, they're filming right now at Star Cottage Studios. So, um, yeah, I don't know what they're working on for this coming Saturday, but I'm excited to see. They always come up with some cool things. Um, let's see what else. Um, if you are in Ligonier or will be around the area on September 9th, um, there's the Meet the Merchant event that we're doing with a couple of the other merchants that are around our area on West Main Street. I don't know if we have anybody on East Main Street, but um, yeah, so that should be fun. 
Um, as William mentioned, when we did this event originally, both William and I had COVID, so we had to miss it. So uh, we, you did not get to meet us, but um, yeah, so that's on September 9th. Check that out. Um, last night we had book club. We talked about um, When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill, which was a lot of fun. I think, um, I think it was a good book club. Um, we had a new member. Um, Kim, and if you are interested in checking out what some of the participants made, um, head on over to our Inspired by Reading Book Club book group on Facebook. It's a closed group, so you have to um, uh, submit to go uh, to be accepted. And then when we get, I do it in kind of like a batch order. Um, so whenever I get a couple, then I'll go and check all the profiles out and make sure that I can see them um, and that it's a real person. And then, yeah, so that's, um, I believe Kim posted so far and Norma posted. Um, it's always interesting to see what people will make after they've read the same book. Um, so that was last night. That's the last Monday of the month. So that was good. I had a good time. Um, up next in our for August, our book club book is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. I, mean, I always feel like I'm saying her last name wrong. I probably am. But um, we'll be talking about that at the end of this month. And that's I enjoyed it. I read it a couple months ago. It came up in my library. So I jumped on it because you never know when you're going to like fall out of rotation. Um, and like sometimes it'll be like, oh, well, this person um, is ahead of you. And then they like renew it a dozen times. Um, so I listened to it a while ago and I really enjoyed it. So hopefully folks will like that one. Um, she came out with a sequel. Um, called Gathering Moss, and I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to give it a try to get that in before we meet up for the next uh, book club, so that I can talk about a book that not everybody has read, I guess, I don't know. If you are going to planning on attending um, and you want like bonus points, uh, you can try to read it as well. I got it on Audible Originals Plus catalog um for free and so that was good all right i see a couple more people have tuned in donna's watching hi donna diane's watching hi diane harry's watching hi harry yeah this is kind of a weird um time slot i feel and um if you didn't see it earlier um i had some technical difficulties with my microphone working and AKA not working. Um, so that took a hot minute to figure out, but I think I think everything's kind of fixed. Norma said she could hear me, so um, that's good. All right, so the other thing I wanted to remind folks is we're currently engaged in a kind of meta, um, a meta program where we can um, make a little bit of money for interactions with our posts um, on Facebook. So if you if you really want to help us, you can always go over to our Facebook page and like, comment, um, share the post, um, and just destroy that like button because we get a little bit of money every time somebody hits like. And um, yeah, I think we're up to like $6, which that doesn't really sound that much, like that much, but it's six more dollars than we had before. So why not? Um, so yes, if you are so inclined, please do so because every little bit adds up. All right. Um, so as I mentioned a little bit ago, William debuted the two new uh, challenge mixes. I think they're really beautiful. The Labradorite is particularly nice, and the Garnet. Garnet's one of my favorites, and I feel like it gets 
sometimes the short end of the stick. But anyways, I love it. And I hope other people love it as well. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into it. Um, it's been kind of a long day today, so um, I'm ready for a nap. We, I got up super early. Of course, whenever I have something kind of planned early, I can't sleep. So getting ready for something like that is always a little bit uh, nerve wracking. And then, uh, you know, driving and doing all that stuff. So you're going to see the ceiling for a second as I flip the camera around. And then, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, so if you didn't know, last week I was attending Touchstone Center for Crafts. I took a workshop with Harlan Butt, um, who is an amazing enamelist. I didn't finish any of my work and we were super busy over the weekend, so I did not make any progress. However, I thought I would show you some things from the weekend because I think it's pretty fun. Um, so I also have to thank the Acre Program for helping fund my uh, trip to Touchstone. Um, they're a really wonderful organization. They still have openings for their cohorts in Johnstown, Greensburg, and New Kensington. Um, so if you are in or around those areas and you're a creative entrepreneur, um, I cannot praise them enough because they really do a wonderful job with business coaching and helping you connect you with other artist makers um, and small businesses. And it's a really wonderful program. I don't know if they're still going to do the training sessions at Touchstone, but um, there was a wonderful program that they did in the original cohort where they um, gave scholarships to the students so that they could, or the, the participants of the ACRE program. Um, and I was fortunate enough to take one from Harlan Butt. So thank you so much, ACRE program. Um, it was a wonderful experience and I really, really enjoyed it. All right, so um, at Touchstone, one of the things they do is they have a scholarship fund and um, they received over 400% increase in applications this year. So the need is out there excuse me, the funds are not necessarily out there. So um, I'm currently doing a fundraiser on my Instagram page. That's Andrew Thornton Artist, all one word, all lowercase on Instagram. And we're up to like $20 now. So um, I ideally would love, love, love to get, make and raise enough money to pay for one class. But I know that, you know, times are not always the easiest right now. So, you know, I understand. Um, uh, and we're going to do our best to help get the, you know, boost the signal and get the word out there and hopefully raise a little bit of money for Touchstone because it is a really worthy cause. And I do firmly believe that being creative and uh, having a craft school experience is world changing. So anyways, they do a um, fundraiser every uh, a week during their week-long sessions and towards the end of the week they do um, it's a silent auction and they started on Thursday evening at lunch or at dinner and then it runs until Friday afternoon during the until the end of lunch and um, I won a lot of stuff I think some people left early to get on the road a little bit early or they laid down to take a nap and they didn't uh, set their alarms. So I got some really cool things. So I'm going to show those to you now. And I thought this was really funny because um, sometimes the students don't know that this is, goes on. 
So they kind of like have to come up with ideas on the fly. And so the ceramics uh, workshop, they made these little postcards on cardboard, which I thought was really charming. Um, and just an, a lovely way to help raise money for the scholarship fund, which uh, desperately, desperately needs help. So yeah, I thought this was fun. And I think it's a nice way to have a little bit of artwork from the ceramics people. I made some friends uh, there during the lunch times. And uh, I, I really had a good time meeting them. And uh, the teacher there is an artist who was there teaching that week was an artist named Melissa Weiss. And she's out of the Asheville, North Carolina area. And I follow her on Instagram. And I'm always trying to get one of her cups, but here, but there's two things that happen. Um, either um, I can't get one because they're so popular, which is usually what happens, or I have money and she doesn't have mugs, or uh, I don't have money and she has mugs. Usually it's that I have no money and she has mugs. But um, yeah, so I was super fortunate and I got this. I got a deal on this ceramic mug by Melissa Weiss. I'm pleased as punch with it. This one's going in the case, y'all. I just love her work. And it's a beautiful stoneware mug by Melissa Weiss, and I, I just love it. So I won this, and I won the postcards. Um, and let's see, what else did I win? I won a lot because, and the thing that's kind of nice is if you, um, you can end up getting some pieces that are really wonderful and not spending a lot of money. So I got this piece, it's not gonna all fit in the um well maybe i can make it fit so i got this really lovely watercolor abstract watercolor um from a lovely lady named bev and we met in line in the checkout or the check-in uh the first day and throughout the course of the week um we would check on each other and be like how's it going what you doing in class um, and she's just a really lovely lady. And um, we talked here and there, not too, too much because everybody is super busy. Um, but uh, I was so pleased to be able to get this and kind of commemorate our time together. Um, so that was lovely. Um, and I didn't spend a lot of money on it for original piece of artwork. I thought that was pretty wild. Um, but sometimes what happens is if um, people don't bid, um, then you can even scoop in and get it for a better deal. So I got that from her and I thought that was nice. All right, y'all get ready. This is the King Daddy. So this piece is kind of the sample that Harlan Butt showed us, uh, on how to do his technique of cloisonne wire. So he's an artist that's mostly based out of uh, Denton, Texas, but he also spends part of the year in Colorado. A really cool guy. He, um, so the class was not only on cloisonne, but it was on haikus. And at first I was like, I don't know about this haiku business. And it's not because I don't like writing. And it's not because I don't like poetry because I like both. Um, but it, I don't know. I, the last time I wrote like a real haiku, was like fourth grade and um and it was like cats are nice and kind of really not anything um uh, i don't know it just was uh an assignment that we had in school and it felt very specific to that um so i wasn't necessarily a hundred percent on that part but then when we started um doing it then i started getting really into it and now I write like haikus wherever I go. Um, and I have what's called the good finger, 
which is this one. So the five is easy. You know, that's the, if it ends on your thumb, when you're counting out your words or your syllables and you end on your thumb, that's easy. But this one, sometimes it's a little bit tricksy to get, you know, if is it six, is it seven, is it eight? So uh, this is the good finger. And so anyway, so we did that. It was a really kind of nice way to start the days. Um, and be my, more mindful of our surroundings, especially in nature. I thought it was a really clever thing to do. Um, and also we got to know our fellow classmates better. Um, sometimes if you're in a class, sometimes you click with your fellow students and sometimes uh, you don't. So this really helped us bond, I think. And um, yeah, so uh, so he did haikus, but he also did this enameling technique. And he's mostly known for this repetition of, um, of cloisoned cells. Um, and so he showed how to make the jig and how to put that together and then how to glue these on um, and then fill them and then sand everything down and fire everything. And I was a winner of the cup during the silent auction. And I'm just pleased as punch. I almost threw up. I was so excited because usually his pieces are uh, big, 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 big ticket items. I mean, they're worth every cent uh, to see how much work goes into creating one of his vessels. Um, they're worth every penny because that's some mind-blowing stuff that he does. Um, with the ones that he does, like the, for the big museum commissions, he takes and he spins out the bowl. So it's almost like a lathe. And then he uses these formers and pushes the metal while it's spinning. And it conforms to the shape of the... of. Uh, the kind of the the form or guide or whatever. So I think that's pretty wild. And then on top of that, then he goes and does the enameling. Um, and that is a, is a big labor of love. So I feel like I won the lotto almost. I did not spend anything near what this is worth. Um, he has a show up in Mobilia Gallery. And most of the, the average price of his piece is in that gallery are 8,000 plus. So um, I could never ever afford to do that. Um, if I, if I, I don't know, I think it's well worth it. And he's such a talented artist. Um, and there, there's uh, somebody we know, mutually know, and she, she named it, she called him a living treasure. And I have to agree, he is such a gentle spirit and a good, generous uh, educator. Um, sometimes you take a class and people are a little bit stingy with knowledge. And I feel like he conveyed what he had to share and then some. So it was a really wonderful workshop. The people were great in it. I learned a lot. Um, and then I got this cup at the end of the week. So I am super, super duper stoked about that. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. So yeah, so I got that. Um, I'm wrapping it up careful because I don't want anything to happen to it. I'm going to put this off to the side so the cats can't get into it. All right. So for my project, my book club project, I didn't actually share it last night because I hadn't finished it. But I thought that I would make some beaded dragons. And I'm working on a couple beaded dragons, but those ones are going to take a long time, the big ones. So there's an artist on Etsy. Her name is Bead Crumbs with a Z at the end. So it's like crumbs, like cake crumbs, but it's Bead Crumbs. Uh, with a Z at the end, and she's on Etsy, and sells these super cute patterns. And so I made this one. I thought this looked like Beatrice, um, who is in the book. 
But then I decided to make a little itty bitty one. I haven't finished sewing the threads in, but I think these are so addictive to make. Once you make one, then you're like, oh, well, let me try this again, but in a different color way. And then you end up with like a little sack full of these. Um, this one definitely took way less time than this one. So if you're gonna do this, um, you know, you kind of have to have a plan. I definitely don't know what I'm gonna do with these besides them being cool and cute. Um, one of the pieces that I made was of a little witch um, before and I embedded her in epoxy putty. I was showing and teaching a class in Pittsburgh at Contemporary Craft and um, yeah, I made a sample where I took one of the, the bezel pendants and I embedded the beadwork directly in the resin or in the, um, in the epoxy putty. And I think it turned out really nice. I could get some shading also while it was setting up. So I think that was nice. Um, so I made those last night um, because we read When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. And I thought these were appropriate and also super cute. So um, I can't quit that super cuteness. So here you go. Um, Norma says, those dragons are very cute. And Norma says, the cloisonne is gorgeous. Yeah, cloisonne, I've taken it um, a couple different times, taught by a couple different people. And it's one of those things that is, there's so many things that can go wrong that um, it's a little intimidating. So anyways, <clears throat> all right. So let's do a beaded bead. This is just one example of how to do it. There's many, many ways of doing this. All right, so I've got this six pound fire line. I'm gonna cut off a wingspan. All right. And I'm going to thread my needle. And I kind of like this way because it's a little bit different than what a lot of people think about. So I kind of think it's nice. So what I'm gonna do for the beaded, for the core part, I'm using these pearlescent uh, plastic beads. And the reason why I'm using these is because they're nice and lightweight and they're also uniform in shape. Um, sometimes if you're trying to do a beaded bead and it's a really wonka doodle shape, it's just super frustrating. So having this nice little perfect sphere is really handy dandy. So um, I have these pearlescent um, plastic beads and I think they're, they're really lovely. You know, some people they roll their eyes when they hear plastic but I, I don't really care. I think it's a wonderfully versatile material. And as long as you know what you're doing with it, um, props to you because it's really cool what people have been doing. So I've got this, this round and I've got my needle with a thread. And I'm just going to string that on my needle. All right. And then I'm going to walk it down towards the end of the piece. I don't want to make too short of a tail because it's basically useless um, and it it won't be good. So um, I've given myself about four or five inches at the end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a knot. Now, tension is everything. You're going to want to create a knot um, and then knot it again. And you're going to want to have firm tension, but not too tight. And that's probably one of the most frustrating things. It's a totally Goldilocks story, but it's true. Um, so anyways, I pass that through. I turn that into a knot. And then so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to pass this back through my bead. It doesn't really matter which way at this point. And I'm just going to tug it and the tail, I'm going to tug it until it gets kind of buried in the, the middle of the pearl. Okay. 
So that's one way of doing that. And that's super easy. Um, all you have to do is just string up some beads um, and there you go. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle. And since I came through the bottom, I'm going to go down through the top into the bottom. All right. Now, these parts don't need to necessarily be perfect. It's nice if they're close, but you know, sometimes that doesn't always happen. So I've got these pieces um, put up where they need to be. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do some brick stitch and cover this with some brick stitch. Now I'm going to use, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I'm gonna try it. I'm always trying things. I don't know if you all do that as well, but I think it's such a really wonderful thing that you can do to like explore different ideas. And yeah, so. So anyways, I've got these out and I'm sprinkling them on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up two of these beads. And that's how you start brick stitch. I, unless you need to decrease, um, you always pick up two um, seed beads to start. And so I, by putting the thread under through here like this, you can see there's a thread bridge that goes all the way around the bead. So I'm gonna put my needle, I'm gonna go underneath that thread bridge and then up through the last bead that I just strung there. And it's gonna be a little bit wonky at first, but you kind of have to persuade it. So push it down, make sure all the beads fit nice. These are kind of a little bit of a weird shape. They're a little bit of a triangle shape, but I thought I might try them out because I like them. And then I'm just gonna continue picking up a bead, going underneath the thread bridge, and then going back up through that bead. Um, and that's basically brick stitch. So, and by basically, I mean, it is brick stitch. So underneath and then up through, and then you're also gonna have to slide it into place and make sure that the tension is right. So as you add beads, it will get a little bit tighter. So you may have to adjust the tension ever so slightly, but um, yeah, that's what, what happens when you, when you kind of like force that in there. Um, so I'm just adding this row of triangular beads, you'd say six triangular beads. Um, and then I go underneath the thread bridge and then I go up out of the, um, uh, the beads I just added. And I'm just gonna finish this row. These go surprisingly quick. And they're a little bit different than other beaded beads I've noticed. Um, most of the beaded beads I see are ones that focus mostly on the side of the bead. This kind of thing, it, um, it shows um, the underside of the seed bead. And I think it's a cool kind of design element. Um, because usually you're just focused on, you know, the shiny side parts and not necessarily the ends. So I think it shows you how to think about things in a little bit of a different way. All right. Now, one thing you do have to be careful of, which I just made this mistake, is... Um, so you've got different, okay. So I made a mistake, what do I do? I can pull it out or I can take the back end of the needle and pass it through. And then use the back part of your needle 
to undo things because if you use the front part, not the eye, if you use the front part, the sharp pointy part to do it, you can split your threads and make it worse actually. So I just use the end or the eye of the needle and I back that up through there and that was super helpful. All right, so what I did wrong here is there's two um, beading wire or lines and I did one side, I'm almost done with one side, but I didn't do the other side. And so this other side was migrating up to the top side and the top side um, is, uh, you know, if you don't do both then it kind of gets weird. So um, anyways, so I am working on creating the brick stitch foundation for this. So I'm gonna, I picked up a bead that's still on there. I'm gonna go underneath my thread bridge and then up through the speeds that I just added. Let me know if y'all have any questions. I know sometimes uh, things make more sense and then sometimes, uh, sometimes they don't. Did I do it again? No, I didn't. Thank goodness. It's kind of a pain. I mean, it's not terrible but um, it's kind of a pain. So all I'm doing is stitching on these beads and I'll be done in just a moment. So did you all do anything fun over the weekend? Let me know. It's always interesting to see here what people have been doing. All right, so when you get to the end of your row, I would say just keep going. Um, there's a little bit of a break where these, um, the wires don't quite evenly match up, but that's okay. So I'm gonna pick one of the other ones and maybe that'll help tighten things up. Yeah, this is a beautiful color bead, um, both of them. So there's that plastic on the inside, but there's also this beautiful glass that's going on that's very luminescent. Um, and yeah. So I'm almost done with this. This is uh, another really wonderful foundations where you don't necessarily have to have um, a complete plan, just doing the work sometimes helps. And um, yeah. So I just sewed that through. And I'm almost ready for the next step. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to respond. All right. So one thing that I did just there is I let the peyote stitch from the previous row um, cause a problem right there, but I fixed it. Um, Norma says, looks like Saturn. Yeah, definitely with the rings. And I'm just gonna go all the way around. And once you get this down, then you're gonna be like, what? You're gonna be like, I have figured this out. So did anybody else do anything fun over the weekend? All right, I'm almost to the end here. And you'll start to notice that you're getting close to the end when you can't fit any more in. And sometimes you'll end up with a little bit of wiggle room and that's okay. 
sometimes you just need to um, have that. And so I can't, I'm coming to the end of the row. I added a bead and then my thread's coming out the top. So I'm gonna pick up this first bead that I added. I'm gonna go down through the top of the bead. And then I'm gonna go up through the bottom of the bead. And that's gonna really lock that in place and make this nice and sturdy. All right, so you have a couple different options now. So the idea behind this is not a new technique at all. Um, it's one that bead weavers know a lot about because they have to use it. Um, so I decided to dust it off and give it a try. So this is um, so this is um, a bead that's covered with brick stitch on the outside. Um, if you want to keep going with this round pattern, you can do that. And I encourage you to do it and maybe go this way and go, you know, that way. Um, so, yeah. So to repeat this and to cover the entire ball, you make um, the brick stitch that goes around it. I showed you how to do that, picking up the thread bridge and then going out through the B that you just added. Um, but if you wanted to do it more, you can always like go down through here and add this like that. Um, so there you go. Um, the more you do it also, the thicker and denser the sketch. So just keep that in mind. And also, if you run into an area where if you're using kind of bigger beads like this, um, they're not going to want to nestle in like the corners. So what I would recommend is to do a couple rows of using a size 15 or size 11 seed bead. And you'd be surprised just how, um, how much they help go into those little places that, um, you know, you can't reach necessarily. All right, so I think what I am going to do, Don says, just baked kohlrabi bread today. Oh, good. Yeah, I like kohlrabi okay. Um, I discovered that when I moved to Pennsylvania, so I think that that is something that not everybody has. I've noticed a couple German people um, have uh, recipes for kohlrabi. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to finish this up off camera and I'll share pictures tonight. Um, what do y'all think about that? Um, and all I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna add another thread bridge by going through the center of the bead and maybe doing a half hitch anchor knot so that it's all kind of, uh, work together. And if I wanted to leave this plane, I could leave this plane or I could go back on top of it and embellish it because each of these rows has thread bridges. So I could do brick stitch all over this and create um, kind of like a pinwheel effect. This could be like um, the on like a, on a cone flower. It could be that little raised area in the middle with like the fans kind of flowing out. Kind of like this. This is circular brick stitch, but I did the core, um, not like this, but kind of similar. All right. Let me see if I have another example of it. This is another example of just using the circular brick stitch around a bead. You just add it um, more around it. But it does help to have the thinner rows to take up the space and get into the crevices where the larger beads won't fit. So, um, but if you don't want to do the cover the whole entire bead, then you can do this and it will have kind of like that halo effect. All right, I'm going to um, see y'all later. Um, William will be back tomorrow with another tutorial. Or actually, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, I think tomorrow. 
and we'll have more. If there is anything that you're interested in learning or doing, let me know. It's always kind of interesting to come up with something uh, because I never know what people want to do. Um, so I know what I like to do and what I can do. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to email us at info at allegorygallery.com. And uh, sometimes we can do it. You know, not, not every time. I, I can't do everything all the time, but sometimes I can. So um, we definitely listen to all of you out there. And um, yeah, so I will see you all tomorrow. All right. Have a great rest of your evening. Hopefully you had fun. And if you make any beaded beads, we would love to see it. Please share your creations in the Allegory Galleries Design Challenge group. All right. See ya.